Uh, item D, receive report and provide direction to staff whether to regulate smoking in tobacco retail shops and smokers' lounges. City Attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Tonight's report deals with smoking in enclosed places of employment. Uh, the state labor code provides a comprehensive scheme dealing with this issue. And what it provides is that smoking in enclosed places of employment is prohibited. Uh, the public policy behind this was to create a uniform scheme so that there would be a uniform standard in all cities. Now, despite this um, large and comprehensive prohibition on smoking in enclosed places of employment, dealing with secondhand smoke, and trying to limit the amount of exposure that employees have to that, there are 14 exemptions within the state statute. And uh, specifically, the state provides cities with authority to ban or to regulate smoking in those other 14 areas. We're only dealing with one of them tonight. I do have that list if you want to know what the whole 14 are. And the specific one is um, a question that staff wanted to bring to you about uh, smoking in tobacco retailer shops and smokers lounges. So a specific exemption where smoking is allowed despite the general prohibition is smoking in tobacco retailer operations and associated smokers lounges. Now cities may choose to regulate those differently or ban them as I indicated and out of 12 cities in San Mateo County about six of them prohibit it and six of them allow it. Now, we'll mention to you that these ordinances were adopted in the 1970s and 80s, so how much they're really followed and regulated, I can't tell you, so, because I do see some inconsistencies between what I see in the law and what I see in practice in several cities in our county. Now, um, currently, San Bruno has no particular regulation dealing with smoking in uh, retailer shops. We do have one chapter that deals with uh, a requirement that tobacco retailers, if they sell cigarettes or similar products at all, uh, get a permit. And this was a, a county uh, requirement that we adopted, I believe, last year, and that's been adopted in all of the cities of the county. But it doesn't deal with smoking per se. Now, there is a new trend um, that you may be seeing out there, uh, smoking in the Bay Area. Um, stores that are called uh, hookah bars or hookah star stores, which sell a kind of a smoke flavored tobacco, which is smoked in a water pipe, as I understand it. And that's kind of a cool and funky thing that you're seeing in places like San Francisco and along the Bay Area. So there, there is more of a proliferation of that. And you may find um, hookah bars, but also your traditional cigar shop and, and all uh, in different kinds of settings. Sometimes um, this operation occurs in conjunction with a coffee shop or a snack bar or a restaurant um, or a regular kind of bar. Now there is one in San Bruno that is planning to be located on San Bruno Avenue and which already does have its entitlement. But um, that sort of raised the issue as to what is the city council's comfort level with um, that activity taking place uh, in San Bruno. So whether it's hookah or cigars or cigarettes, um, the city staff is looking for the city's council, city council direction and guidance, whether it is comfortable or not comfortable allowing smoking to occur in smokers, retail shops, and associated smokers' lounges. So at this time, I'm happy to answer your, your, your questions. City and it looks Attorney, like you have one, Mr. Mayor. I have a couple or several. of questions <laughs> okay. and comments, right. So we are going to have, uh, despite my feelings, a hookah lounge or bar in the city, what will that, that um, proprietor be allowed to do? Well, that's a very good question because like a lot of things in the law, it's, it's not always um, completely clear. I can, take you the, I can tell you the position that San Bruno has, has taken on this and, and what issues kind of surround that. So um, what the law says is that when you have a tobacco uh, retailer shop um, and a, a smoker's lounge, what, the main purpose of the tobacco shop has to be <coughs> selling tobacco in order for the exemption to apply under state law that, yes, you can have smoking go on in this establishment. So the main purpose in order to get the exemption is t selling tobacco or tobacco-related products. 
but the law doesn't further define that for us. It doesn't tell us what that really means. Does that mean 100% of the activity has to be selling tobacco and tobacco products? Could you have incidental sales of bags of chips and gum? Could you sell alcohol? Well, the legal authority is all over the place on that. While the California Legislative Council, on the one hand, has said, no, it has to be 100% selling only tobacco products, or you don't apply, or, or you don't um, get the benefit of the exemption that allows smoking to occur. On the exact opposite hand from that is a case that occurred in Pasadena, where a judge found that in a cigar bar, it was okay for there to be uh, the selling of alcohol going on, because that was only incidental to the major activity of selling the tobacco product. Uh, the AB, uh, ABC, which regulates alcohol, has indicated that, hey, we'll, we'll license um, where 10% of the activity is selling alcohol, 90% of it is selling tobacco. So what that means is the landscape there is confused. And in the face of confusion, the interpretation that I have placed on it and provided to our staff is that no other activity can currently uh, occur other than the, the um, selling of the tobacco product or the smoking of the tobacco product, that they can't sell anything else. Now, we'll tell you that uh, a question has been posed to our uh, state attorney general, and the attorney general mm -hmm. may come down with an opinion at any time in the next couple of months that may be in instructive. So if you do end up um, directing me to um, bring back any type of an ordinance that limits you know, this <coughs> activity in any way, one of the things that you might want to consider if you do allow, uh, if you do allow smoking or, uh, to some degree, is whether you want to allow any other activities to occur or not, because I think you probably can regulate so that. So it's your understanding that this new lounge that's going to go in San Mateo Avenue will be allowed to sell tobacco products and Nothing use else. them on the premises, but that's it? Correct. Okay. Under the current construct of our law. Okay. That could, but that could change absent um, guidance from the city council. All right. I, yeah, it, I just have to say this. I mean, I, I get asked as, as mayor and previous mayors have been asked to sign proclamations supporting the American Lung Association, the American Heart Association, the American Cancer Society, and we are, whether you like it or not, encouraging uh, the, just the opposite here. So I would like to, in the future, and uh, if the council agrees, maybe uh, have a small study session. It wouldn't take very long to see what we can do to actually ban these facilities in our city. I'm just not for it at all. It's uh, maybe this one got biased because of the entitlement, never had to come before the council. Um, but I, I think we need a little more study on this because I just don't think it's the right thing to do. Uh, okay. um, so there are two possible options. I mean, I realize there may be other uh, questions or comments from city council members. But one thing that you could do if the council were in um, agreement with your position would be to direct me to come back with an ordinance that uh, right now prohibits smoking in smoker retail establishments. Um, and the other thing that you could do is look at this question more broadly because there are 14 different exemptions and um, you could look at things beyond tobacco retailer shops. Okay. Well, why don't we hear what the rest of the council has to say? I would assume then that this facility, you would have to be 18 years or older to enter into it because if it is a tobacco uh, selling and or using and you must be 18, no one under the age of 18 should be permitted within the facility. Is that a fair statement? You're right. As long as that is the only activity. So here's one of the kind of uh, problem areas. You're absolutely right uh, that a retailer cannot sell tobacco to a minor, and that's illegal. Therefore, they should not be able to enter the premises. The question that has not been answered uh, across the state is that if you allow other activities, like um, selling food, for example, and you cannot prohibit minors from um, an from entering an establishment that you know I I is serving food, what is that? Where does that really end up legally? So um, that's why some cities do specifically say, you know, minors prohibited, and it's the risk is on the establishment as to how they reconcile th these contradictory issues. We have a facility in town center that sells uh, tobacco products, and that's okay. 
as long as it, it's a different issue as to whether smoking is occurring okay. in there. So because it's just tobacco products, that's fine. They're able to do that under the current, uh, what we have currently established. Correct. But obviously, there's no smoking on that location. Well, if it's only selling tobacco products, then no. smoking could be allowed in there. If they're selling other things, then that's a different situation. So, so right. for example, you probably yeah, have. And I haven't been in there, so someone. There are. Se I'm not sure which establishment, but 7-Eleven, even if it has a tobacco retailer permit, can sell cigarettes. But because its primary purpose isn't just selling um, tobacco products, then smoking cannot occur there. If its primary purpose is to sell tobacco, and that's its real function, then smoking can go on there currently under state law. Okay, so in this particular one that we're speaking of right now, fun. my understanding listening to you tonight is that it's sole primary purpose selling and or smoking on the premises, period. Is that accurate? Or Th that's accurate? what this establishment does. I need to get a little clarification for me. It basically just sells tobacco products and that's it. That's what I'm understanding from hearing from you. My misunderstanding, or I, I wasn't sure if you were talking about a a, a, a real establishment or a theoretical. talking about the one that you're talking about that already has some entitlements on San Miguel. Okay, so that that establishment, its primary purpose is Smoke. to sell um, a, a tobacco-related product. Therefore, currently under law, smoking can occur there. Okay, and so therefore, no minor would be allowed in that facility. Correct. Is that correct? Yep, you are okay. right. And, and how, how do we, is it just the same thing as uh, when they have somebody go to try to buy up cigarettes or alcohol, that's how they're tested then, to see that they're abiding by the, the law? My understanding is that generally in this area, and maybe the police chief has to speak to it, is that the county um, has primary enforcement over that, but it's really for the police chief. Yeah, that's correct. The county has... Uh, provisions and, and goes and enforces the tobacco regulations for uh, minors purchasing and the alcoholic beverage control handles uh, the alcohol related issues. And, and I can appreciate what the mayor is saying and maybe uh, the discussion is doesn't hurt to actually look into the topic. Uh, but also, very clearly, I don't think minors at anywhere, shape or form should be in there, near there. I mean, I know you can't, but again, it's not for them. It's, it's, it's illegal, but these, these, this uh, concerns me. And just, again, what it is promoting, uh, and I know it may be, um, people do enjoy it, okay, but, but it does concern me about it opening the potential for minors being able to have a, an avenue in order to do that. And, and Mr. Medina, just so it's clear, um, that concern would be even more warranted if the AG comes out with an opinion that says, hey, you could do other incidental things like sell, you know, chips and gum and that's okay because then minors are supposed to be able to get, to come in and get those things. So um, in the absence of any city law to the contrary, you know, the situation there could change. Mr. Ibarra. <laughs> Funny you say that, but you know there there are bars that say cannot you know no one under 21 come in, but there are bars that sell food. There are bars right. that sell. It's kind of know, similar yeah. because you know you can take your kids to an establishment that's a bar that also sells food, and they can go to the food part of it. They yeah. can't be sitting up at the bar. I, I, I read the staff wine. report you know with interest, and uh, you know and you explained it. Clearly, as far as you know, this 10% rule and how the various agencies, federal, county, and you know, local agencies now are, are going to have to go through a rule book to see who's in compliance. And I've seen establishments where they've introduced the pipes, and even though they may not be smoking indoors, I didn't witness them smoking indoors, they're outside. And so, what I don't want to do, and you know, and I can be I mean, I don't want to go overboard because I'm a reformed smoker and everything, but I can appreciate what the mayor is saying, is that do we want this type of establishment, you know, that possibly may, you know, grow in, in, you know, in, in this community? And my answer to that would be no, and that how do you control it? And it just seems like there's just going to be so many things that may not be able to be enforced. So. 
be interesting. Good chair. Michael. Um, I have a question. Uh, I noticed that in your, in your list there are three uh, cities in the county that specifically prohibit smoking in retail stores. Now, being that this is a lounge, would that be considered different from a retail store in the sense that the purpose of this business is to allow people to come in and smoke? Um, would we somehow open ourselves up to uh, a lawsuit in terms of that we may actually be preventing them from operating in the way that they intended? Well, um, how the lounge comes into existence is if there is a retail shop where it has the primary purpose of selling tobacco products, then it can have a smoker's lounge associated with it, and that is required to either be in the um, retail establishment or attached to it. Um, so if you prohibit <coughs> the smoking in the retail shop, you effectively um, prohibit a lounge. And if you don't, then both, both can potentially exist. Okay. So what was your suggestion about the ordinance? Well, uh, there are two ways you could go here. You could have a study session and look at all, only one exemption, the tobacco retailer issue, or you could look at all 14. And um, you, you could do that, uh, or and or you could direct me to come back with an ordinance that deals with only, uh, for the moment, the single issue while you're studying the other 14, and that is uh, prohibiting smoking in tobacco retailer operations. Right, but that would, would exclude the one that's already been approved. Correct. Uh, okay. All right. I would I would like the uh, city attorney to bring back that ordinance, but I'd like the input of the rest of the council. I'm I'm in agreement. I am. I am as well. Me too. Bring it back. Okay. So I'll bring that back on the single issue. Right. Um, is it the council's desire to further study smoking and look at the other exemptions, or would you like to just confine it to the, the single issue? Maybe the if, chair. If, if oh. I, mean. I was just going to say, would it be um, better for us if we wait for the attorney general's findings and then go from there? Should we? No, or I, does, I, it wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily wait on that. And you could really do two things. You could go ahead and enact the ordinance that prohibits it in the smoking oh, yeah, in the retailer part. shop. And then I could bring back a report that provides to you a, what the, a list of the other 14 areas. And you could consider whether you wanted to look at that in a study session or, or not, whether those were of concern. So to if you. I suggested I wanted a prohibition for these types of facilities in the future, what would that take? On, I'm sorry, on the other 14? On, on the, the types of facilities that... Yeah, I mean, I, if you like, I can give you a list right now so you can have an idea of what, if that's something you're even interested in, the other 14 exemptions or areas. No, if, if I said I want to ban these facilities, yes. what would that it's take? Smoking in those facilities as opposed to the facilities. <laughs> then it would be the same thing. It would be an ordinance that says uh, essentially you cannot smoke in these Particular yeah. facilities. Just so ban you, the facilities completely. Well, you can't ban the facilities. So you cannot, for example, ban uh, a tobacco shop. Mm -hmm. Just like you can't ban um, a store that sells alcohol, mm -hmm. because then you're running afoul of the Commerce Clause and the Constitution. So you can't prohibit the product and the sale of those products currently. What you can prohibit Correct. is the Use activity of, of smoking in those facilities. And that's the ordinance you would bring back? Correct. Okay. Uh, so there must be an error in your list because it says that Millbrae prohibits tobacco retail stores. There, there is, and I, I, um, I apologize for that, and I noticed another typo as well. I did send oh, out a... I did read that email. But <laughs> okay. An email just <laughs> saying that, right. that it was the smoking in the retail shop, so I apologize for that confusion. Okay. Okay. So you have your direction? I, d uh, I do. Uh, so I will bring back the retail shop smoking ordinance. And then do you want a separate report on the 14 other facilities sure. as well? Yeah. Or, well? Or not? Yeah, I we'll look at them. Yeah. Okay. okay, then I will do that. Just in the interest of being well informed. Okay. All right, thank you.